Green lung is a term uh, derived from the coal miners that had the black lung. Uh, basically, the green lung is something that is a is a is nothing that you can say 100% of definitive as of yet because we haven't had the proper testing for it. But basically, it is when you breathe in keef or powdery mildew consistently, the mildew is growing spores inside your lung. And they call that the green lung, or they also call it the mushroom lung as well. Uh, and basically over time, you will, it will kill you over time if you consistently breathing in this mold and this mildew on a consistent basis. Uh, even breathing in the Keith crystals, because those crystals, it's almost like you're breathing in like a fiberglass. You know, you're possibly cutting in and causing problems inside the lungs. Uh, the symptoms of that would be coughing up blood, uh, finding it very difficult to breathe all the time, always constantly having to uh, stand in front of a fan uh, to breathe, to get airflow going through. Uh, these are definitely strong signs that you've got some serious problems. An ordinary day of like, beginning day of trimming would consist of you know, you'd, you'd show up to your job, they would have X amount of plants, they would need to be trimmed that day, and then they would assign you know, X amount of plants. They typically require you to, to trim, trim about a pound a day is in the market right now in the industry. Uh, very few places will pay uh, by the plant nowadays, usually it's by the hour. Uh, so your typically work day will be, say, from 7.30 to 4.30. Uh, with your regular breaks and lunches and things like that. The job itself, as far as like trimming the, the actual process where you're trimming the weed, the job itself is, the physical part of it is not necessarily hard. The hard part of it is where you have to be on your feet constantly. You're constantly, you know, holding this plant in your hand. You're constantly moving your scissors with the other hand nonstop. So, the problem that you come into is when you're in contact with the keef all day long, which is the crystals that grow in the plant, because eventually what happens is you'll get a rash that'll break out. Um, some people have allergic reactions to these type of uh, issues. And then you have the issues with the power you mildew as well. So the last time that I trimmed uh, cannabis uh, was for one of the larger companies I won't name. And uh, basically, they would assign us to a workstation. As you're staying at your station, somebody will bring a, uh, usually it comes on a bamboo rack, and you'll have four plants to five plants hanging on a rack. Uh, these plants are around, you know, two to four feet in size. And then you typically will start off into the, uh, you know, from the bottom of the plant, and then trim my way back down. Basically what I would do is take off all the sugar leaf, which is the little small leaves, the big leaves, and then, you know, once we take the bud and we trim it, what they call debudding, which is basically when you're cutting off the buds off the stem, then you kind of just trim it up to make it look presentable for the customers when they come into the dispensaries. That's the primary object of trimming to begin with. I learned how to trim uh, basically from on the job. Uh, it's basically repetition, so it's just like anything else, you're doing the same thing every day. So speed comes in time. Uh, when I started out in this industry, I was trimming around the average 56 grams per hour, which is around a pound a day. Uh, towards the end, I was averaging around 300 plants per day. Uh, to put that in perspective, the average worker does around 40 a day. So you know, speed comes with time, uh, you know, speed is good, uh, quality is good too. Uh, so I focus more on the quality of it, more than so the speed. The skills that I have to make me a good trimmer is making sure that the buds, when you look at it, number one, it's going to be tight, it's going to be dense, it's not going to have little stems sticking out the side, no crow's feet on the bottom. Uh, if it's Something that has, uh, if it's say, uh, say you might have a bud that may have what they call nodes, it'll have three different buds on there. Usually I'll just trim those off instead of putting the whole branch into the, into the tray uh, because that adds weight for the customer. So I try to, when I trim, to make sure that 
when somebody looks in my bud, they're going to see no stems, no crow's feet, very tight and very dense. Um, basically, when, you, when I stood into the room, it was a room the size, I would say, about 30 feet in width by 17 feet, you know. And I stood with, they had typically assigned to these where they have a bench. And you'll have four people on each side. So you'll have eight people to a bench. Usually there's two to three benches going at a time. And each side will have a rack of four plants to each side. So typically that's how the inside, there's no windows. Um, the ventilation that you get is only from the fans that they use for drying. And that's pretty much it. When I trim, it's, it makes it, the difficulties that I find for myself is you're on your, I'm on my feet all day long and I'm constantly breathing in the THC keef, the crystals, and then I'm also breathing in any other nutrients or chemicals that may have been associated with growing the plant. Uh, by doing this constantly all day long, it does cause myself respiratory problems. I've had uh, bronchitis, uh, bronchial type infections, uh, constantly due to powdery mildew because there's nothing to prevent it from, you're just breathing it in. Uh, there's no you know, de detection to know that you're even what it is. Uh, now we do know now, uh, I have an idea now for myself, uh, basically whenever I, I sneeze or uh, I start to get the rashes, you know, you can, I know for myself that that's a good sign that you know, powdery mildew is present. I would describe powdery mildew as basically like a white powdery substance. Uh, it almost looks like keef in, in itself. Um, a lot of times the consumers will not be able to know the difference between keef and the powdery mildew. Um, you can kind of rub it with your finger and it kind of like brushes off a little bit. That's uh, one way to detect it. It's basically created through uh, moisture that is building up. Uh, what happens is, is whenever the drying process happens in the plant, because they don't allow the plant to dry in the two week span, typically in the cannabis industry today, there's a two day drying time. So what happens is, is all the water flushes through the top of the plant and has nowhere to go. So powdery mildew and other different molds will begin to form as a result. Once those mold spores get loose in the air, it can travel to any other plant in the grow and affect it immediately and spread very fast. Powdery mildew to me is uh, very dangerous. Uh, I believe that it uh, can cause some serious respiratory problems if, uh, if it's, you know, you're in contact with this consistently on a daily basis. Um, for myself personally, I believe that, you know, if, because it's something that is not being treated uh, in the industry and nobody has you know, distinctive knowledge about it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real danger uh, to the industry. When I work as a trimmer or working to grow, you're exposed, I'm exposed to raw product versus you know, the consumer who's smoking something that's already been dried and processed. When, I, when I'm working with the raw product, it's right there, fresh, freshly grown, freshly chopped down. So it's, you know, when you're dealing with the green raw material, it's, you know, you're dealing with a very, you know, dangerous environment uh, because the mold spores are gonna be in the air if there is uh, mold on the plant and you're just standing right there next to it, breathing that in. I've worked uh, in the industry, I've worked for approximately seven different uh, dispensaries you know, on a consultant level, on a cultivation level as well. Each of these dispensaries that I personally have worked in, they've all faced the same problem. Uh, some more than others, uh, just depending on the type of warehouse they have set up. Uh, some of these warehouses that I've personally worked in before, they might have been a car garage, so you have leaks in the roof and things like this, uh, which, you know, of course, they're going to cause more mold grow. So it's been my experience that all of the companies that I personally worked for all battle this problem. Uh, other industry workers that I personally know all battle the same issue in their jobs. Uh, 
because we're growing indoors. Without naming the company, I was uh, trimming for a company one time. They were known to have uh, a, a powdering mildew issue. Uh, this particular plant, almost half of the cola was covered in powdery mildew. Uh, I didn't even, in my experience, it's best just to you know take those buds and throw them to green waste uh, and have them you know process be thrown away. Uh, some companies, like that particular company, will simply just cut off, cut out the powdery mildew part, and still process the bud, uh, which is what that company did. You think that's okay what they did? No. That is not okay what they did. Uh, that is most, most definitely a very serious health risk to the consumer uh, because even though they do believe that fire will kill them, the powdery mildew, it will not, and it will cause some asthmatic effects uh, in the long run to people. Uh, so even one lady uh, has gone into a coma from you know, taking something that had mildew in it. Uh, it was in an article, I believe, in the Westward where they uh, were talking about a woman who was either doing concentrates, I believe, or edibles, and ended up having an allergic reaction to the powdery mildew and ended up in a coma from it. So even though that might be an extreme case, in most cases it just causes respiratory problems, uh, there is serious risk to being exposed to this constantly all the time and smoking, it, for that matter. Uh, very dangerous. Most instances that I've worked in, in cultivation, whenever you see something like powdery mildew, um, if there's any kind of insects in the plant or something like that, you would notify, notify your trim manager, let them know this is you know, what you have. It's their responsibility to discard that product or to determine if they feel that it's safe enough to you know, process through. Um, I've only walked off uh, one job that was the people that had the mildew that was covering you know, most of their plant and still wanted to, to process the plant. Uh, so in those instances, yes, I, would, I walked off, absolutely. I would love to be hopeful. I think it's gonna take it to be, just as to get a DC uh, and get before the real lawmakers to you know, put some federal regulations on the industry. Uh, not that I'm regulating the industry, but in these instances, I think that's what's needed. I think we need to, you know, do some studies. We need to have like a pulmonologist to get involved and start testing some of the people that have been working in the industry consecutively for years and see the condition of their lungs. And then we can get some proof that's definitive and then that shuts them up. You know, there's nothing else that proves right there. So I think that's the, the next step, to be honest, is to have, you know, get a pulmonologist involved, find people that have been in the industry for three or four years consecutively and have been steady in it and not quit and see the condition of their lungs and see how it's really affected them or not. And then that's the true test. The industry definitely needs to be focusing more on the safety instead of the, the, the monetary gain. Uh, and that seems to be the primary focus is the monetary gain versus, you know, the actual safety of the, not just the employee, but also to the consumer as well because it goes down the line. You know, I think that they, they focus more on, let's see what cannabis can really do medically, let's eliminate these type of issues are very easily fixed uh, with simple you know, ultraviolet technology and just you know, having the proper you know, equipment in place, this could be eliminated.